Oh, thanks, Steph. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in here. So um, within the next about 45 minutes, I'm going to attempt to do something that I've never done before, which is actually build an entire scenario for you right here live. So that way you get some idea of how easy and quick it is to build this. Uh, but before I get into that, I do want to give you a bit of background um, information. So that way we kind of all have a similar mutual understanding because I feel like if we don't have that, then someone's going to get confused and get maybe get upset with me later. Uh, so I do want to make sure that everyone understands where we're at as far as, you know, with a CBR, what is it? How does it work? Um, what's kind of the process for building within this platform. So CPR is essentially what's a rapid authoring tool for virtual reality. Um, there's, you're going to be building your scenario based off of a 360 image or a 360 video, and then adding other elements on top of it, similar to like how you would build in say like Toro or Storyline or whatever program you might be using. Very, very similar methodology because it was designed for instructional designers to build uh, virtual reality scenarios without having to have any coding knowledge or anything like that. So it makes it super easy, super effective, uh, super cost effective to be able to develop and deliver within this tool. Uh, now, you might have seen this graphic before that I'm showing up here on this slide. Uh, this is on our website. So if you haven't seen it before, please go out to our website and take a look. Uh, but uh, we kind of point out that you can create these scenarios in four easy steps. Now, these are very generalized steps. Um, and as we all know, there's always kind of multiple parts to a lot of these steps. So here we're saying, you know, you can capture or generate your image because uh, we do have an AI wizard now to generate 360 images within a CVR. Uh, then you create your scenario. So building out all the different functionality that you're going to build into it, then you publish it and then you track it. Uh, so like that's kind of common stuff that you do with any e-learning exercise that you would want to do. Uh, but I'm going to break down a couple of these steps a little bit further. So these first two steps, these create and generate uh, steps here. Um, I'm going to kind of walk you through a little bit more detail on this process. Um, so when we're starting to build our first VR scenario, there's a lot of things that uh, we need to kind of consider and keep in mind as we're doing this. And so number one, that's a plan or a storyboard for this scenario. Uh, now this can take many different forms. It could look something maybe like, you know, a storyboard like this, or in like my case for the scenario that I did today, I just jotted things down on a, as an outline on a piece of paper and said, okay, this is what I want each of my scenes to do. Here's the different things that I want to have accomplished in here. Um, as far as like my planning today, I was looking at, okay, what features do I want to show? What, you know, how big can I make this thing without obviously not being, have, not having enough time to build it, those types of things in there. But a lot of things that you want to consider when you're planning this is just going to be, okay, your objective, your purpose, what do you want to have your outcome be uh, from this? Um, kind of as an example, like I was talking to a medical, like a hospital network earlier, um, and their whole thing is they want to teach people how to handle a code blue scenario within the first five minutes of a code blue showing up. So there is their purpose, and that's the behavior that they want to, to reinforce. Okay, how do you respond in that regard? Do you want your scenario to be linear or branching? Do you want to just go through a single, like single storyline, essentially, which is what I'm going to be doing today, just because it's a little bit simpler. But you can create these different branching paths to where one choice dictates what happens next. And you can kind of keep going through that process. You can have people go down paths that lead to very bad outcomes. But because it's VR, that's okay. They can go back and try it again and do better the next time. Um, and then you do want to make a plan for each one of your individual scenes that you're going to have in there. And we'll see a kind of example of what a scene looks like here in just a little bit. And then obviously kind of the details, okay, what assets do I need to get? Do I need to record audio? Do I need to capture some images? Do I need to capture some video, some additional video to like, what other things do I need outside of my 360 scenarios? Um, and that kind of goes into our gathering assets here. So, you know, gathering your 360 images or videos, so that way you actually have a base for your, your scenario to be built on. And then any other media. Uh, so that can be text, that can be video, audio, images, 3D models, whatever those might look like for you as far as, again, going back to your purpose and behavior and things that you want to facilitate there. Um, and then from that point, you put everything together, which is what we're going to be doing today. So I've kind of already done these first two steps for us prior to this meeting today. Uh, but then we're going to put it all together. Okay, we're going to upload our first scene to create our scenario. We're going to add additional scenes to it. And then we're going to build out everything using your gathered assets or things that are built into CBR, which a lot of what I'm going to be using today, I'm going to be I'm going to be utilizing already things that are built in with CBR. Again, number one, to save time, but also just to show you what's already built in there for you. So that way you can 
you know, build these scenarios, you know, know how to build them quick and easy within the tool. That way you don't have to worry about some of these other things. Um, and then the last step here, I think is very important. It's not one that we'll get into very much today, just because it takes a lot of, that can be the one that takes the most time outside of the storyboarding phase. And that's just publishing your scenario out to a test group, having them test the scenario, kind of review it um, like you would an e-learning course or something with a SME, um, have them test all the functionality, make sure there's no bugs or things that are coming in there, getting their feedback and then making adjustments and just kind of repeating that process until you have a finished scenario. So this can take however long you need it to. Again, the complexity of any of these, you know, any of the things within your scenario can increase the complexity of this kind of fourth phase here. Again, we're not going to be getting into that today. But just kind of know that that is a key part to this. Now, we already kind of showed you the storyboard template here, but um, this next slide here. So what are we going to be creating today? So as I was planning this out, um, I was kind of thinking through a variety of different scenarios that I could show you or how to build because there's so many different types of things that you can't build in, within virtual reality. Um, you have it trained on like soft skills and conversations and things like that. And I kind of went down that path a little bit, but um, wasn't really getting a results from chat GPT that I want to use within this scenario. Um, and so having the text and like, I didn't really have time to write out my own scenario. So I thought about it. I said, okay, well, we have these two examples out there in the public scenarios. Also, I think at least Space Escape, I know, is linked on our website. I think Alarm is as well. And I said, okay, what if we took Space Escape and merge it with this Alarm scenario? And, you know, what could we what could we build there? So it's kind of showing a kind of gamified quiz, which is what Space Escape is, with a real-world example of, you know, addressing a concern on a, you know, in this case, on a platform within a brewery. But what if we did all this you know, what if we put these two together so that way you had to answer the quiz to get through the spaceship essentially here to get to the alarm that you have to shut off before your, before your ship crashes. So that's what we're doing. So again, um, if you've ever been into one of my webinars or if you know me at all, um, as you know, Stephanie is you know, well aware, uh, I am very nerdy. So anything that comes out of here, so like my last webinar that I did around the AI wizard was literally building a fantasy scenario about a wizard. Um, there's also a video out there that we produced for the Lectora AI wizard where I'm literally wearing a wizard hat and beard. So uh, just note that I am very nerdy. And so that's going to come out a lot within this particular scenario around uh, building out a kind of sci-fi-ish scenario here. So with all that being said, as kind of background. I'm going to go ahead and start building this scenario. Now I'm going to do my best to explain to you what's going on around this, um, but feel free to ask questions. Stephanie, if there's questions that pop up that you need want me to answer as I'm going, uh, feel free to kind of interject and ask those questions as we're going. Because uh, I'm i more of a conversational type presenter. I'm not very much a, I'm going to stand up here and talk at you for an old whole hour because that's just not fun for me. That's not fun for you. So as um, we're going through this, if there are questions, feel free to put those out there for us. But uh, right now we're getting into CVR. So I came into this directly from our studio. Um, if you missed the announcement for this um, yesterday, um, I think that recording is probably out there somewhere. Please go back and watch that to kind of understand the coolness of all of this here. But um, I was able to access CVR from that screen there. Um, and now I'm gonna build out a scenario. So like right now I'm looking at all the scenarios that I've either built or I have access to from other developers here. Um, and I'm going to go through and start building my scenario. Um, and I'm going to do that by creating create scenario here. Now, there's a variety of different ways you can, you know, start the scenario. You can either upload your own image, go to your, uh, go to the AI wizard, type some stuff in there to prompt that. Um, but for me, since I've already kind of generated all my images and everything, I'm actually just going to go to my my scenes and pull in the one I want to start with here. So I'm going to go ahead and add this scene and I'm going to call this uh, red alert. And I can put it in description or categories. I'm not going to worry about that right now, but hit create scenario. And now it's going to create my first scene of my scenario as well as the file itself. So I have this little like doorway into the spaceship. There's a spaceship right there that I'm looking at. Um, I'm going to come in here right away actually and just kind of change the name of this to be a uh, red alert title page. A red alert title, we'll just call it there. Um, there's other parameters here on my scene that I can adjust. Uh, one thing that I will do as well 
um, is just kind of set my initial view here. So if you notice, I'd like default to this kind of direction going inside. I actually want to default out here. So now as someone comes into the scenario, they'll come in to this direction. I'm actually going to adjust that a little slightly, slide a bit amount further over here and click done. Uh, now this is going to be my title page. So this is going to be a very basic, very simple kind of page here. So I'm going to just go ahead and upload uh, an image here. And if you notice, I have a folder off the screen here that you're not seeing that I'm dragging things from. Um, and as you notice, I can just drag this directly onto the interface. If I want to add it, I can either drop it in as a hotspot. So it's going to allow me to add actions to it, or I'm just going to have it as an image. In this case, this is an image. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that in here. And you notice it's my title, red alert, alarm in space is what I called this. Um, so I just kind of built this graphic out in Illustrator yesterday and kind of threw this in here today. Um, I'm now going to give us a little start button here to go along with it. So we're going to have, go ahead and throw in that little button. Now this is a hotspot. You'll kind of notice there's a difference between the icons over here. It's like this is an image hotspot here. Uh, this is quite a large button. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of bring that sucker down a little bit here and kind of you know, align it to this. Now, right now it's still aligning it based off of the sphere. So if you notice that guide that popped up, it's, you know, kind of dragging me down there. But I do want these kind of be aligned to, together. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of shift and click both of these together and just click add to group and then uh, rename this group here, just uh, red alert title. Actually, I'm just going to call this one title. Uh, and we'll go ahead and leave it visible and not turn on fix because that's just going to make it fix within the within the user's view at all times i'm going to show you a little bit of that later on but now you notice this grid pops up so that way these things can be aligned together now the with a hotspot i can add actions to it i'm going to not do that right now just because i don't have things that it needs to act upon in here quite yet uh, but also while i'm here i'm going to go ahead and add in an audio clip as well so just kind of dropping that in um, I'm not going to put that in the grip. I'm going to drag that outside of it and just put it up top here. The only adjustments I'm going to make here is I'm not going to have it autoplay. And I'm also going to turn down the volume because this is going to get very loud and it's very obnoxious as an alarm coming off. So I'm actually going to kind of pull it down a little bit um, in volume here. So that way, as we go through the scenario, as we progress through each room, it will actually progressively get louder um, as we're making it to our final destination here. So we're going to hit done there. So I have my tile group, I have that all set up. I'm now going to go ahead and just collapse that and spin around here real quick. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add an info card, which an info card in CVR is at your way to add text to any scenario here. So we're just gonna call this our intro text as the name of the object here. Um, it is very important to name all your objects just because it gets uh, a little confusing as you get more and more stuff in here. So you don't want to have like hotspot two, three, and four without really knowing what those mean there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I have some text. I'm going to just copy and paste in here. Uh, now I wanted to get some audio to connect with this because I think like the nice thing with VR is that you can utilize all sorts of different media in here, not just text on the screen. Didn't have the opportunity to do that or do it the way that I wanted to. So I just wanted to kind of throw this in. Um, now I did have this generate from chat GPT. So you might notice some of its, you know, vernacular put in here. Um, but here's a little, like just a little message telling us, okay, here's what's going on within this scenario. Here's what we need to go address. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and add another hotspot, but this time, Rather than uh, pulling, you know, in an image like I did earlier, I'm actually just going to go to our media library and come into our actions here and throw in an up arrow and going to click. And we're actually going to turn off the visibility on this one too. Um, in this case, uh, well, actually, I'm going to go ahead and just complete that as well. Again, I want these two things aligned to each other, so I'm going to just kind of shift each, click each other, click add to group. And then going to name this group now um, intro. And again, both these things should be not visible right now. Okay. Um, so now let's go ahead and kind of wire up. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and add my new my other scene now before I actually go in there. So I'm actually going to go ahead and pull in this hallway scene because we'll need this to kind of wire up our our hotspots here in just a moment. Um, so we'll go ahead and click done. I'm not going to worry so much about its initial view or anything at this moment in time. I'm going to just go back up here because I want to just kind of 
I'll go ahead and wire these up for you. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start with my start button here. So I'm going to come up here into my actions. I'm going to add a new action to play my sound effect. And then another action to um, hide this first group here that this is a part of, this title group here. Then we're going to show the other intro group. And then I'm also going to pan my scene around, which is pan two right there, to go to this intro group here. So basically what this is going to do is once I click the start button, it's going to spin the user around um, at a, a, a you know fairly you know quick pace here. So that way it, it's now facing that intro there. Uh, but now I'm going to go to my arrow up here. And I'm just going to give it a very simple action to link to my dark spaceship hallway here. And in this case, I am going to come in here and change the initial view here to something like this. And I'm going to click done here. So that way, as I'm coming into that scene, I'm coming in from that direction there. So now, again, just going to warn everybody now, there is going to be an alarm that's going to start sounding. So just be aware of that. Um, you may or may not hear my voice over top of it, um, but just know that I'm going to just kind of show you what this looks like now that we have this all kind of wired together. So I'm going to go ahead and click the start button. And we're going to go ahead and kind of move into that space. So it obviously saw me spun me around, started that audio clip, and now I'm going to be going into this hallway here. So uh, now we're going to kind of start building out this hallway here so in this case over here this is going to be a locked door for me and so um how i'm going to build this out is i'm going to have another hot spot in here but rather than doing any of the two options that i showed you before um because i've practiced building this scenario um i actually have this saved for me um in my clips uh, so your clips for you uh, just so that you know is any sort of like reusable element that you might uh want to go back to and use again. So it's really a good way to save time for you. Um, and so I need to find, I think it's my numpad. I think that's the right one. I should have probably, uh, yeah. So it's gonna be either one of the things I need or the other thing that I need here in just a moment. So we'll go ahead and kind of throw this in. Okay, that's the other thing I need. Uh, so it must be called something different. Uh, Name your objects better, folks. That's what we're learning from this particular exercise here. Um, so I'm inserting actually two clips, which is actually fine. I need this other clip as well, but I have this little numpad thing, which again, got added to this group. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out there real quick and just kind of position that over here on this door. So that's gonna be locked for me. And then I have this whole numpad thing that's built out as again, as a full group here, which I'm actually gonna position kind of over here. Uh, we'll get more to this here in a second, but before um, I get too far in here, I am gonna go in and make sure that that annoying alarm continues with us throughout this entire scenario. So get used to that um, as we're going through this. We're gonna go ahead and click on a couple of loops there. Um, and then I'm gonna actually pull in the same audio clip that I was using before. And like I said, I want this to be progressively louder. So I'm actually gonna move this down to eight now. So we're going to click done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and present, put this at the top of our scene here. Um, and then, yeah, we have our two clips here that we're going to utilize. Um, and then in this case, I'm actually going to have a couple more info cards that I'm actually going to add to the space here as well. I'm going to kind of turn off their visibility initially here as well. Um, and in this case, I have one that's going to tell me that the door is locked. So we're going to start with that one here, kind of just put in my text here, and just kind of call this door locked. Now, I'm going to again pull this out of this group here, just so that way it's... Um, wait, that does not seem right there. Sorry about that. Okay, so now it's pulled out of that group there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of position this info card. So that's kind of off to the side here. So that way when the user pops up this hotspot here, it's gonna show um, that there. 
Um, I'm going to add another info card here as well. That's going to go in pretty much the same spot, but it's going to tell me when the door is unlocked here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that text, copy that over here, and say uh, door unlocked. And again, turn off the visibility. Just kind of positioning that there again, similar similar location to where that first one started. Um, I'm just going to move my ten key back up top here. And now I'm going to start building out some questions that are going to be put in here as well. So I'm actually going to um, go ahead and add some questions to my space here. So let's go ahead and add a question here. The question box looks very similar to you know everything else that we've seen so far. Um, and I'm going to start putting in my questions here real quick. So in this case, I decided to make this a pretty easy uh, or at least I hope it's going to be easy for people to get through is, okay, um, this is going to be how you get the code to unlock the door that you're enter on that keypad. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of just make this, again, super easy for everybody. Uh, don't want to complicate this thing for myself or for anybody else. So we're going to go ahead and you'll see what the code here is in a second, but I'm going to set these questions first. But in this case, the square root of one, at least I hope everyone's aware is one. So we're going to go ahead and put that in there and we're going to position that here. We're also going to turn off its visibility here. We are going to keep it hidden on answer there as well. I'm going to click done there. Um, and now that I have that question done, I'm actually going to go ahead and just kind of copy there and paste it and kind of move our questions around and just kind of changing out a couple of pieces of information. I'm not going to get super tricky with these questions but I am going to just kind of go in here and put these all in. And we're actually gonna kind of title these a little bit differently. We're gonna put this one as question one. This is question two. Um, and you might be seeing what I'm doing here. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and put these in here as this one should be nine. And it's going to be question three for us. And now we're going to go ahead and put the answer as three and done. And then lastly, question four, which I'm going to put kind of over this direction here. And this one, if anybody can kind of see my pattern that we're going with here, um, it's going to be 16, which is square root. Uh, which is four as the number yes there. Gosh, so, these are far too many math questions. I know, and it's just going to get worse. So oh. just be prepared for that. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and add this to a layer here as well. So layer as opposed to a group. So layer just basically means you're going to group everything together. It's going to remain in the same location, unlike those, unlike when you're in a group, you're kind of aligning it to each other. These can be in separate locations. So for something like this with our questions, um, it makes it super um, easy to do that here. So I'm going to kind of click done there. So I have all four of my questions here. Now I actually need some hotspots in order to get access to the questions, because if you notice, I made them invisible. Uh, so I need something to trigger them to be visible. So I'm going to go ahead and add a hotspot. Now, in this case, I'm actually going to pull in a um, a, a shape here now. Um, I'm not really too picky on the shape that we're going to be using for this, but I'll go ahead and kind of make these red like I am with everything else. And we'll go ahead and put in the isohedron here as, a, as one of our 3D models built in. I'm gonna position it right behind the question, uh, double click in on it. And essentially all that these are going to do now is show the um, question that it's associated with. And then it's also gonna just hide itself. And so that's done there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and actually position this in a new layer. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out there. Um, the other thing I'm actually going to do, going to do is just kind of label this as um, hotspot one um, in this case. And so it's going to remain in that location there. But again, I'm just going to kind of come in here and 
since all these things are going to be doing exactly the same functionality. I'm just going to copy and paste them along. I'm going to come in here and edit this and just change out the question that it's associated with. It's still going to hide the quiz object here. I'm going to go ahead and paste that again. Move it around, position it here. And this is going to go to question three. Again, hiding it on answer here. Um, and one thing I just noticed, I made a mistake here uh, that we'll go in and address here in a moment. Um, I'll actually go ahead and address this now because I did, I need to turn these off on visibility as well. They do not show up quite yet. But that's okay. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just again, copy paste this one to create my fourth one and hotspot four is going to come over here to this question and again it's going to um, show question four here so um, got that going on and so now we're again going to add these to its own layer as well and we're just going to call this layer question hotspots Okay, so now if we go in here right now, we have our big buzzer going off, but nothing's quite wired up, but all those things aren't visible because they're all trends, they're all that visibility stuff is turned off. And so now let me make sure I have everything in this scene that I need. I'm pretty sure that I do. Oh, nope, I have, I'm missing one last thing here. Yes, Steph, is there a question? There is, I was gonna, if this is a good stopping point, is there a way that you can have like a map or a home icon or like a menu that's always visible so you can uh -huh. click on it and kind of like jump from room to room, always figure out yeah. where you are? Absolutely, yeah, you can do that. Um, so uh, it's not something I built into this scenario, but that's absolutely something you can do. Um, you can also do like a make kind of create as a heads up display, which is actually what we're doing now with another piece of this. but. Um, but if you want to create some sort of a menu that people can navigate through, absolutely, you can do that. We have a number of scenarios that have examples of that, uh, where people can just kind of jump to the specific uh, scene that they want to go to. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so now just kind of the last thing that we need to put in here for us is going to be um, our kind of our code example here. So this is actually going to be an info card that just has the word code on it it's going to be not visible initially but it is going to be fixed and so we're going to go ahead and click done there um, you'll notice that that popped up a grid for me to position this around and so um, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of position this down in my bottom left hand corner here but now as I you know, kind of click off of it you'll notice that that code always remains within the user's view. So again, if you want to do that kind of navigation menu, you could put that down here at the bottom fixed so that way people can always navigate between whatever they want to there. Uh, but for our case today, this is going to show us the, uh, the code that we're going to pop up. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, kind of do this again with some of our icons built in here. So I'm going to go ahead and go into our numbers. And we're going to go ahead and just kind of use these square ones. We'll go ahead and insert these just as images. They don't need to be hotspots. These are going to be invisible and fixed here. So that way they're going to be kind of part of this. So we're going to go ahead and shrink this sucker down as well. So it's going to go kind of in line there. Um, and we're going to kind of repeat this with um, two, three, and four as well. And if you notice, it kind of gave me the marks to resize it to the same size there. Go ahead and pull those down. And kind of position them roughly, you know, at equidistant from each other.
and somewhat in alignment with each other. I'm not going to be worried about too much detail here as far as how those are positioned. Um, as long as my OCD doesn't get to me, <laughs> we'll be fine. Uh, but uh, we have those now as the code that's going to pop up for us as we're going through this. Now, the last couple of things that I need to add to this are not things that are going to be um, visible uh, for us, but they are going to help us build out our functionality here. So I'm going to come in here and add a couple of variables here um, that actually got added for me already, I guess, because of my, my clips had those associated with it. So I'm going to add a variable called keypad and one called code. So those are already built in there for me. Um, like you saw, with, like those came in because of my clips, because those were already associated, it pulled those in um, already. So, but if you want to create one, you just hit add variable, type the name of that variable and put in the initial value, typically zero, but uh, it could be, you know, other values there as well. Um, and that's going to be used to wire this whole thing up. So um, basically what we're going to do now is I'm actually going to start here with my little 10 key back here. You'll notice that again, because this was a clip, it already has things associated with it as far as the actions go, but it's not going to have any of the targets because it didn't bring in the targets along with it. Um, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and the first action is going to be showing my numpad. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and show the door locked message. Um, and here's where we have some conditional. So you typically hit this condition button, but since it, this was a clip, this is already built in here for me. Um, and this is going to be if um, our code is not equal to four. Um, and that's actually the correct thing because, you know, magic eclipse, a lot of this stuff is already done for me. Um, so if it has things that it already knows, it's going to pull that information in there. Um, and then I'm going to show uh, door, uh, door unlocked if... the code variable is equal to four in this case. So basically if they have the full code or if they don't have the full code, it's gonna determine whether these messages are gonna pop up. And then we're gonna go ahead and disable the numpad group. So that's disabling the buttons in that case. If uh, again, the code is not equal to four, again, I'll already populate that information for me there. Um, and last thing I'm gonna show the code info card. So that way that's going to pop up there. And then I'm going to enable our close button that is part of that initial group. Since it's disabling the whole group, I need to be sure that, that just that one button gets enabled. Um, I do want it still part of that group, but I want to make sure that it's going to be functioning there for me. So now I click on, uh, not the group there, but the hotspot. Again, because this was a clip, it already pulls in what it already knows here. So. Um, in this case, the close button is going to hide the numpad, uh, but it's also going to show uh, the question one hotspot here. So hotspot one. Um, and let me just double check here that I have this right. Yeah, if the code is equal to zero, that's right. Um, and then that actually might not be necessary here. So I'm actually going to remove that just because it just needs to, actually that would be necessary because you could click on this at another point. So if code is equal to zero, and then I'm going to go ahead and have it um, hide the door locked message. And we're good there. So now we'll go ahead and wire up each of the individual questions and hotspots here. Um, so within our questions, so whenever a correct answer is given, so like in this case, this is uh, question four, we're actually gonna go back and start on question one just to kind of keep things logically in order here. Um, so when we click on this correct answer here for question one, we're gonna go ahead and um, have a couple of actions that are gonna happen. So. We're going to go ahead and show the um, square one here. And then we're going to add an initial action to hide this object. Then adding an additional one to show question hotspot two.
And then we're going to go ahead and modify our variable. Our score variable, we're going to add to that variable one. Um, and now for the rest of our questions, I'm going to go ahead and just copy my actions here and I'm going to go and just apply those to each of these here, changing out the target here for square two. And then we're going to show hotspot three here. Other than that, everything else is correct. I'm going to go ahead and click done. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste those in there. And again, showing square three in this case and showing hotspot four. Now, this last one's going to differ a little bit because of, you know, we're not going to be, oh, let's paste the actions in there. Uh, we're going to be showing square four, but uh, rather than showing the hotspot here, we're going to go ahead and show the door unlocked message now. And so that's all done for us. And now on our individual hotspots for these questions, now since it's kind of hidden there behind it, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of click on it here in the scene list and going to, wait, that's already done there. So all those are already ready for us. So I think we're actually good to go in most cases, except for maybe our numpad over here which I'm going to go ahead and expand this group again and kind of come into each of these numbers here and say, oh, okay, so these are already kind of wired up for me again because this was a clip. And so this kind of saves us time. So I'm going to just walk you through how this all works. So in this case, I want them to click on one, two, three, four in the right order. It's a very secure code. Um, so in this case, it's going to go ahead and add to the variable if it's equal, this keypad variable, if it's equal to zero. And then as I go into number two here, in this case, it's going to add two to that variable if it's already equal to one. So if it's already equal to one because they press the one, it's going to add two. Um, and you can kind of guess what happens with three and four at this point. So three, now that that variable is equal to three, it's going to add three to it. That's going to make the variable equal to six, which then makes four, um, adds that variable to it. Again, adding to six, you're going to get four. So now the variable is going to be equal to 10. and so. Uh, now it's going to link to a new scene. Now this is not the correct scene that it needs to be linking to. So I'm going to go ahead and add that right now because I don't want to just go back to our previous scene because then that just creates an infinite loop and that's not really what we want here. So I'm going to go ahead and add another scene and hit my scenes and it's going to be this control room here. And again, I'm going to call it control room. I'm going to go ahead and click done there. And so now I have that extra, that, that our next scene in here. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my hallway here and be sure that my four now, let's go ahead and move that over here. My four now is, it's now going to link to the control room here. So as we go through this, so now that everything should be wired up, let's go ahead and test this out. And we'll go ahead, have that very loud, obnoxious thing going off. We'll go ahead and see that. Okay, right now I can't click on anything. Out. I'll go ahead and actually just mute this for us. So that way we don't all have to endure that, but keep in mind in the real scenario, you would. Uh, but we're now going and answer these. So now it's gonna pop up my little code down here at the bottom. And this is a lot of math, but I've obviously memorized these answers because <laughs> I've gone through this so many times. So now I can click on this and um, it looks like I actually did screw up a little bit. Um, so let me go back to my numpad. So, um, and so show door unlock. Um, so let me see here, where do we screw up here? So where's my enable, disable uh, is not equal to four. So um, we're gonna just add an extra action to, um, so I can't, I don't really know exactly what did not work in that first situation, but let me go ahead and just enable numpad if, 
code, no, nope. code variable is equal to four here. Um, that shouldn't be expressly necessary here, but uh, for some reason this, I may have screwed something up on one of the other ones. So we'll go back in here again, kind of taking a look here. For now it's still in it disabled there. One, two, three, and a four. And now we'll go ahead and click on this and then go two, three, four. Um, something there is not quite working for me right now. Uh, but the idea there, I'm not going to spend too much time trying to figure out what's you know not working um, in this case. Uh, I would have to go back. Obviously, this was a real scenario and go and do that. Uh, but um, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of for sake of time, just kind of move on and show you guys the next scene um, and what we're going to do here. So in this case, this is the room where the alarm itself is located. I'm going to go ahead and again, add my audio clip in. And this time it is going to be at 10. So apologies for that in advance. Uh, again, autoplay and looping here. Uh, but in this case, I kind of want to up the ante a little bit. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and add an info card here that is um, going to say uh, go ahead and Gonna let me know that something bad is happening when I get into this room, and that is that a timer is going to start. So I'm going to go ahead and put timer starting, and going to click done there, and just kind of position it somewhere within the space here. So I think I'm going to want my like that looks like a red spot there. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put this in here, kind of set my initial view here to. Um, so right here, click done. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and nope, not, not at a scene quite yet. I'm going to go ahead and put in another clip here. That's going to be this red light button here. I'm going to pull this guy in. And then, where are we at? There we go. And then we're gonna stop the sound effect here. Um, and we're gonna add a couple of things to this here. So, um, something's not looking quite right with that, but, um, choice of life television folks um but here we go uh we're gonna in this case i have this red button in here i actually going to i'm going to want to animate this a little bit so i'm going to go ahead and add an event so i'm actually going to pull this forward a little bit i'm actually going to i'll just go ahead and add this here but i'm going to start at number three here and i'm actually going to animate my red light button and rather than spinning it i'm actually going to just have it go completely transparent on me here. Save there. Um, now we're going to click done. I'm going to add another event, but this time I'm going to be at 0. 0.6, which actually conveniently is where I am. Uh, I'm going to animate again, same object. And I'm going to have it go to 100, so we're good there. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and go one step further, kind of pull it out a little bit ways here to, we're going to actually just bring this down to one second. And now we're just going to um, jump to right before that animation starts and hit point two. So now we're going to hit done. And so now what we should see is a red light blinking over there, which something is not looking right with that particular thing. Let's actually go ahead and fix that right now. Um, it's just bringing in a glow. Um, we'll just have it actually be a NX for our purposes today. Um, and kind of go with that there. 
and something really isn't going right there. So now when I turn this over, I should see a big old X there. Um, so I don't know really what, what happened with my, my clip there. Apparently I forgot to save something correctly, but we'll go ahead and add another question here. And this one's gonna be, I mean, keeping with the same vein of things, we're gonna go ahead and put in our question text here, which is gonna be, you might have guessed it. What is the square root of 25? In this case, we're going to go you know, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we're going to go ahead and click that. We're going to go ahead and turn that off. Now we're going to go ahead and just kind of title this one question 5, which again, coincidentally, is its answer. Um, and then we're going to add an additional question as well here, just kind of on top of it. Um, and you might be thinking, okay, is he just going to do 36? No, we're going to empty the ante here and go to 144, which is going to be, and we'll just kind of keep this kind of simple for the time's sake. And again, that's that answer is there. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and just um, kind of click done there. Um, and I forgot to put in our timer here. So I'm going to do that now as well. This is going to be fixed. Um, it is going to be visible. Uh, we'll add the undone, undone action later on. Uh, go ahead and click timer style here so you can kind of see what that looks like. We're going to keep it where it's at with 30 seconds there but it's going to go ahead and just be positioned down here in the corner, just kind of terrifying everybody that they have to get this done in 30 seconds. Um, and then we'll go ahead and at this point, we'll go ahead and add two additional scenes. What's so actually going to be the same um, scene that we're looking at here, just two of them here. And one of them is going to be our pass and one of them is going to be our fail. Um, And so this one's gonna be our pass. We're gonna go ahead and add in an info card here with our pass text. And nothing really too fancy here, but we have that coming in there. We'll go ahead and add another one. Oops, I put in the wrong. Uh, let's go ahead and add that one real quick. And control panel, done. Um, and then go ahead and add in another info card here to go ahead and put in our fail text. And now we'll go ahead and wire everything up here now that we have everything that we need put in there. So we'll start with our red light button or our giant X here. Um, it's now going to show um, question five, back to properties. Now we'll go into question five, hit the correct answer, and it's going to go ahead and show question six. Now I'm not having it hide itself because it's already hiding on answer. And now on question six here, again, already hiding on an answer, but for our correct one, we're actually just going to get ourselves out of this precarious situation and go into um, our pass screen, which I believe is this one. Let me double check to be sure. Yep, that is our pass one. And then if our um, timer runs out and it's on done action, we're going to go ahead and link to our fail scenario. So it's just going to be our other one down here. Let me just double check that that's correct. Yep, that is, it even says fail text right there. So we're good to go there. So now if I come into this room, so obviously we've gone through those first couple of rooms there. Um, this is going to be our little situation here. We'll hit 12 and we pass. Now if I let that timer go all the way to, down to zero, it would have failed me out of the scenario there. So, um, but I'm not gonna kind of show you that piece just because again, we have to just sit here for 30 seconds and let it go, which is not really boring, not really good for anybody. 
So that is our full scenario. So I have actually done it. There's still obviously some work to be done to make sure everything flows correctly. That's why I'm not actually going to show you the entire finished. Well, actually I can show you the, the entire finished scenario um, in my practice one. So we get some idea of what that's going to, to look like here really quick. If it's all functioning correctly, obviously I had a few things in there that I need to go back and figure out what's going on, but let's just kind of take a look at this real quick um, in full effect. So I am going to unmute this. So just be prepared for the loud horn to come off here in just a second. So go into the hallway here. It's not going to let me do anything at that point. So slightly different from what I did just now. I did obviously colorize these because I was thinking about doing something with color codes, decided not to. One, two, three, four. This room, see the timer starting. Click there, so that shuts off that annoying sound there. Hit 25, hit 12, again, in case, a little bit different from each other and now we pass through the scenario so that's what the entire scenario is supposed to look like on its finish there so um yeah so that's the entire scenario so that's building the scenario in about 45 minutes or so or about 35 minutes so um steph do we have any questions do we have time for questions <laughs> well, we'll squeeze in a few questions that was amazing i i had my doubts about whether or not you were going to finish in time but i should have known better I, we had, I have my doubts, so. <laughs> um, we had uh, several people ask about the publish options. Okay. Once you've built out your scenario, how can you, how can your learners access the scenario? Where can they take it? Yeah, so I'll give you the kind of the short answer here, but there is a more detailed one in our blog. Uh, there's actually a two-part blog there uh, around the publishing options because it's all around, you know, what technology you're going to be taking on as well as what publish options best for that. Um, so, as far as platforms that you can take this content on, you can take it on a desktop computer, a mobile device, tablet, headset. Um, if you want to look at the sport headsets, they're all on our website. But we typically try to stay up to date with kind of the current ones that are in the market, um, specifically around like uh, Meta and Pico and those others. Um, so you have a wide variety of ways that you can take this. So it's not actually, you don't need to buy specialized technology to get into this. You don't need to buy headsets if you don't want to initially. It's still a really fun idea and it's really nice for certain situations to put people in those headsets and kind of keep that thing going. But then from there, as far as the publish options that you have, you publish it as SCORM 1.2, SCORM 2004, XAPI, CMI5, HTML5. So a wide variety of publishing options there, but that's not where it's, that's not all folks. So there's a couple more. So there is a Windows offline publish if you just want to take it on a, on a Windows machine that doesn't have internet connections. Like if you're in a factory or something that doesn't have good internet, we do have that option available to you there. But CBR is also a hosting platform. And so you do have publishes that will basically allow you to distribute it as a link, either a public or a private one, as well as a published type that I think is really quite awesome. And that's our hybrid SCORM functionality because it gives you the ability to host everything on CVR and track the analytics. So like, let me just kind of show you that just because it's it it's more exciting if you see it than if I'm just being excited about it for you. Um, but essentially hosting here, that hybrid SCORM basically gets you access to analytics on our platform, as well as keeps your completion status on your LMS. So best of both worlds in that situation, but you get to grab a lot of data that you may not be able to elsewise here. That was super speed. Um, to everyone who didn't catch all of those, don't worry, we recorded this. And as he said, you can also find that information on our website. I think uh, Christy's been posting the links to those blogs you mentioned in the chat. So those are there for everyone. Um, one last question we did have is Scenario VR a web-based tool or do you need to have it on your desktop? It's it's cloud-based. Um, so any browser can access it um, and you, know, you just build everything there. Everything's stored on the cloud as well. Um, so there's no you know, nothing to download. Uh, no real major system requirements either because of that. Um, it's pretty it's pretty capable on pretty much any machine as well. I mean, obviously you want to make sure that there's decent specs, but um, there's nothing special you need for it like you would with developing in like Unreal Engine or or uh, Unity or anything like that. Perfect. And okay, I said last question, but we're going to take one more. Can okay. you import 3D objects from external sources into yes. VR? 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. As long as they're GLB format, that's the format that we support. Um, those can be imported. 